Hello, good afternoon, everyone. I'm gonna go ahead and wait for everybody to pop in. I see a couple of you already joining us this afternoon. Good afternoon. I went ahead and added in the chat box, welcome everyone. So feel free to just um, let us know where you're watching us from. We're always interested in knowing that information. Welcome everyone. So I'll, I'll go ahead and get started. So my name is Bianca Gonzalez and I'm the Bullying Prevention Program Coordinator with the Riverside Charitable Foundation. And first off, I wanna go ahead and thank our wonderful sponsors for today's webinar. I wanna thank the Riverside Medical Clinic and Abvi, we truly appreciate your support. And um, as everybody is coming in, I just wanna go ahead and share a couple of um, logistics when it comes to using Zoom. So if you're new to uh, using Zoom, um, if you look down, there's a couple of options. So you have, um, there's a Q&A option since we are going to have a Q&A portion to this webinar um, towards the end. Um, but if you do have any questions or comments during the webinar, some of you are already familiar with the chat box. So please feel free to interact that way. Um, that is our only form of interaction during this webinar. So um, I definitely will be taking a look at that um, throughout today's webinar. Um, so with that being said, I want to go ahead and get into introducing our um, presenter for today. So I would like to introduce Kaylin Easton and a little bit about her is she's a former broadcast journalist and she's the founder and CEO of women's wellness brand Kia V. It is a line of personal moisturizers with a mission to make sexual health not X rated, but actually about health. Kia V is an all natural vegan personal moisturizer and lubricant that helps women find comfort and pleasure through all stages of life. Before Kia V, Easton's experience with stage four endometriosis created a vast wealth of knowledge about bodily conditions. Surgeries, medications, side effects, treatments, and symptoms all impacted her health since she first started having symptoms nearly two decades ago. Her experience with endo, along with listening to other women dealing with menopause, postpartum issues and questions about intimacy inspired her to create Kia Bay. So with that being said, I wanna go ahead and give it away to Kaylin Easton. Thank you so much, Bianca. And thank you all of you for just tuning in. I'm absolutely honored to be here today. Um, thank you. I'm gonna do a big Q and A at the end. So feel free to ask any and all questions. I'm an open book. But first, I want to ask for a little bit of grace. I've never done a webinar before, so <laughs> bear with me. Um, I hope that today's session is informative and that it serves you in some way. Let's see if I can get into the share. There we go. As Bianca said, I am the founder and chief lube officer. That's what I call myself of Kiave, And we are all about women's health and creating a product that takes us through every season of life. And I'll share that website later because that's not why I'm here. I'm here because I'm also an endo warrior. I have stage four severe endometriosis. It's something I've battled my entire adult female life. And like most of you, you understand the complications and the frustrations and quite frankly, how debilitating this disease is. Um, I've had multiple surgeries. That's a picture um, before one of my surgeries. And back in the day, I feel like we all were throwing up the peace signs for everything. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm a stage four endo warrior. And one of the things that has changed my life is understanding holistic health and holistic healing. And I was getting ready. I was saving up for huge excision surgery. Um, and I told myself, I don't ever want to have another surgery again. And I promised myself that I wouldn't um, because I had done all of the treatments. I had done the testosterone. I'd thrown myself into early menopause. I had done the surgeries, done the birth control. I've done everything. And the side effects of those treatments oftentimes were worse than the endometriosis itself. And I know that that's not everybody's experience. And some women have had extreme success with all of these treatments and I'm so <laughs> envious. Um, but for me, it came down to, I have a choice. I can keep saving and spending all these monies on surgeries, or I can change my lifestyle. And that's when I really got into holistic healing and kind of discovered this endo diet and how powerful it can truly be for our life. So that's what we're going to talk about today is just a brief overview. It's a beginner's guide to the endo diet. We're going to go through kind of how it can help symptoms, some of the recommended foods I would say to stay away from when it comes to inflammation, things I say eat, I'm going to go through kind of my daily diet um, and tips for getting started. But I do want to also mention what we're not going to cover. 
This is not gonna be a biological look at how food reacts to our bodies on a cellular level. Um, there are men and women who are far more advanced and trained medically than myself to go into that research. And so those are quick Google searches for you. You can find so many published reviewed articles, medical research on food and how it interacts with our bodies. Um, that's for a bigger seminar by somebody much smarter than me. Today, we're gonna dive into the endo diet, what it looks like and how you can start today, this week, incorporating some of these attributes and habits into your daily life with the hopes of helping your endo symptoms. So, okay, what is the endo diet? Well, there's a lot of articles and online publications and blogs that talk all about this, but what I have discovered is that the endo diet is truly a diet and lifestyle that focuses on reducing inflammation in the body with the hope of alleviating some of those <clears throat> endometriosis symptoms. So where does this come from? Well, there was a great article that was published in 2018. It was the diet and endometriosis. <clears throat> and they said it was revisiting the links to inflammation. That was the title of this article. And in this article, they quoted that, <clears throat> I'm so sorry, I've been talking all day at work and then you, you know, run into these and here we are. So they quoted that endometriosis is a chronic inflammatory condition. <clears throat> so the idea is if you can reduce the inflammation in your body, then you can potentially reduce the symptoms. And I want to make a caveat that every body reacts different to different things, right? Every, every my body is going to react totally different to what your body reacts to. If I take a shot of tequila, that's gonna react different in me than what it's gonna react in you, right? And so the same is true with food. And so I don't want you to think that I am telling you best practices across the board that's gonna definitely work for you. You have to tune in and you have to listen and you have to really feel what is gonna work for you and where you are with your endo cycle. Um, but the idea again, the endo diet, we are gonna reduce or push down that inflammation in our body with lifestyle and diet changes in the hopes that some of our symptoms can also be reduced. So my personal experience with this, I have been focusing on the endo diet and holistic healing now for six years. It was six years ago that I said, no more surgeries, I'm done. I can't do the drugs, I can't do the testosterone, I can't do the early menopause anymore, I'm done. I'm gonna focus on my body and I'm gonna focus on healing internally. And one of the neat things is when you focus on pushing down inflammation for endometriosis, chances are you're going to push down inflammation and negativity in your whole body. So you could feel better in other areas too, which quite frankly is fantastic because we all want to feel really good every day. So for me, um, I, like I said, I have stage four severe endo and my endo was terrible. One to two weeks a month on the floor, the bleeding, the cramps, the pain, just like the, you know how the ache goes down your leg and it's in your back and you just, you feel terrible every day. And that was my life one to two weeks a month. Well, with a focus the last six years on this natural healing, I've reduced my symptoms, quite frankly, more than I thought it could. And I'm down from one to two weeks of just extreme terrible living to one to two days a month where I am not feeling my best, have the brain fog, have the sleepiness, have the cramps and the pain and the discomfort and the, the heavy bleeding. But I'll take one to two days over one to two weeks all day long. I think it's it's been uh, such a huge helpful proponent in my healing. And so I hope that it can benefit you as well. And again, I wanna say, listen to your body as I talk, as you start to incorporate these habits, your body will tell you what it wants and it will tell you what it doesn't want. So make sure you're really tuning in as we go through this. So sometimes we forget that what we put into our body matters a lot, right? Let food be thy medicine and let medicine be thy food. I mean, Hippocrates said this, what, thousands of years ago? And yet we kind of forget how, oh, I'm sorry, we kind of forget that food actually matters all the time what we're putting into it. And as I like to say, life-giving food gives life, right? And think about it this way. If you had a cut or a scrape on your arm, right? It was bloody and it, you, you scraped your arm and you left it alone, what happens? Well, your body naturally wants to heal. Your body is an extraordinary organism that wants to heal and have longevity and regenerate in itself, right? 
red and white blood cells rush to the surface, new skin forms. Maybe we have a little scar, but over time it goes away and our body will heal itself, right? If we put a Band-Aid over it, maybe we put a little um, bacitracin or neosporin, that cut might heal faster. We keep it clean, right? When we give our body an environment to heal, it's going to heal. Okay, take that same cut or scrape again, and then you pick at it and it scabs up and you pick at it again, pick at it again, or you don't keep it, you don't keep it clean and it gets infected. Is your body gonna be able to heal? No, because you don't give it the right environment. You haven't given it the opportunity to heal. Well, the same can be true for ourselves internally. When we give our bodies the internal ability and the internal environment to heal, amazing things can happen. Our bodies want to feel good. Our systems want to function properly. But if we're constantly putting poison and toxins and food that's hard to digest or food that's very hard on the system, it focuses on that and not on healing and health. And so the beautiful thing is, is you are in control every day of what you put in your body. And it just takes a little bit of extra time to sit back and think and say, wait a minute, is this gonna be benefit me? And I found with my endometriosis, it's just what it is. My body reacts pretty severely to food compared to a, another friend of mine who doesn't have endometriosis. And I feel like she can eat whatever she wants with no side effects ever. Um, and it's just, you know, the name of the game. And with endo, we have to be extra diligent about maintaining that healthy internal environment because our bodies are already struggling. We already have inflammation. We already have, for me, I have internal bleeding. My endos on my kidneys, my stomach, my bowels, the inside of my um, abdominal walls. I mean, obviously my ovaries, my fallopian tubes, my, it's all over the place. My body's already struggling enough every month. It doesn't need me to constantly put poison and toxins into it to make that burden even heavier. So what's bad? What is bad? How do we get going with the endo diet? What would I suggest you remove and start to remove on a daily and weekly basis? Well, here are some of the main foods that we have found in research and science, especially within the endo community that can increase inflammation in our bodies. So the terrible three, that's what I call them, the terrible three. And I'm gonna go into these a little bit more detail in the next slide, but gluten, dairy, and added sugar. Oh, do these three just wreak havoc on our systems and on our body? and they just pump us up with inflammation. And quite frankly, they're very, very hard on our systems. Like I said, we'll go into that a little bit more, but if you could start to think about your gluten, dairy, and added sugar intake, it's a great place to start. Eggs, eggs, the classic superfood that might not be a superfood. <laughs> the research is still out. We have both sides of the camp. What we see with endometriosis and what we see with other chronic illness is that eggs can actually increase inflammation. And if you're familiar with um, Key of A or any of our YouTube channel videos, I did a video on eggs a while ago um, because women with endo need to be aware of the types of food that can increase inflammation and increase negative symptoms. And eggs, unfortunately, are one of those. Um, there are some thought, controversial, I know, but some thought that eggs truly feed pathogens and virus and bacterial loads already in our body and allows those pathogens or viral loads to multiply and get bigger inside of our bodies. And again, that, that's still a controversial research that I think we're still figuring out. Um, but eggs, if you could limit or cut down your eggs, I would highly recommend it chemical load. Oh my gosh. Have you guys ever gone to the grocery store and all the rows, all those little aisles in the middle, and then you got your produce on the outside. If you can focus on the outside of that grocery store, you're going to be so much happier and healthier and feeling better every day because those aisles are chock full of foods that have chemical loads that are just so they're just beyond what the body should handle, right? Soda, your processed foods, candy, candy that has chemicals and these random flavorings. And it's like, wait, what are you putting in this, right? Skittles are not just Skittles. They're full of crap. Um, juice, and I'm not talking about the juice that you make at home with your little omega juicer and you put your cucumbers and your celery in it. No, the orange juice, the cranberry juice, the apple juice that you buy in the aisles of the grocery store, they're full of sugars, they're full of chemicals, um, and they're not really giving you many nutrient benefits. I'm gonna pop in, look at the chat, make sure I'm not seeing anything. Okay, um, and then ingredients you can't pronounce. 
we always want to look on the back of those nutrition labels to make sure that you understand what you're putting into your body. Too often there are words that have like 14 syllables and you can't pronounce them. <sighs> Guys, that's not a natural food. God didn't just plant that on the earth, <laughs> right? It's chemically created. There's a chemical load. And unfortunately, that chemical load can wreak havoc on our symptoms. So examples of food that have high chemical loads, right? McDonald's, like fast food, bacon. Oh my gosh, bacon is so good, but it is so bad for you. Um, and you just want to be very careful that you're not weighing your system down with foods that are just too much of a burden for it to handle. Soy. Soy is highly controversial. There's been a long range of studies that have said that soy, especially with estrogen dominant women can increase that estrogen flow, causing more endo or chronic illness or issues with menopause, right? And it's been like this, this widely studied thing for a long time that soy, if you're already struggling with hormonal imbalance could be negative. There's a new sign of evidence coming out saying that, well, mm, soy isn't as bad as we thought. Um, it was in a, a vegan documentary that I watched recently, and this new scientific evidence says that maybe it doesn't really increase estrogen dominance and that it's not as bad as we thought as long as the source of soy is very pure, organic, you know, very healthy source of soy. Again, use your best judgment, listen to your body. Soy has long been one of the no-nos, no-no foods on the endo diet list. But again, there's controversial research for all of this. Um, what I am saying is not necessarily the, the Bible of food, but it is what we're seeing and it is exactly what I've experienced with my stage four endo and what has helped me um, immensely. Meat with hormones. So hormones, antibiotics, uh, meats that have a heavy burden of fat. So think about your beef, your lamb, those are pork. Pork is a heavy fat meat. It's a you know, the other white meat, but it's still a heavy fat meat. That's hard on your liver. That's hard to process and digest. Um, and so if you can start shopping for meat that, um, you know, no antibiotics, no human growth hormone, no hormones at all, right? Try to look for healthier versions of meat because it could have a direct effect on the inflammation in your body. And then the one that everybody hates, <laughs> the one that gets the shaking of the head, alcohol and caffeine. <sighs> Guys, it is no shock that alcohol is poison and it's toxic and it does not help our bodies. Do I enjoy a great margarita in the summertime? Yes, I do. So do not hear me say that I'm holier than thou, but alcohol can be highly inflammatory, has a high sugar content. If you're drinking beer, that's a high gluten content, right? There are a lot of things in alcohol that are detrimental for the body. So if you are used to just raging every weekend, see if you can cut it back. If you have a glass of wine every night, maybe go every other night. Substitute with herbal teas or lemon waters or even sparkling water with little drips of lemon or lime and it can be really refreshing. Um, alcohol just, it's highly inflammatory. As delightful as it is, it's highly inflammatory. And the same with caffeine, right? There's a lot of research that says that coffee and caffeine can be great for the brain, can great for waking us up, can have a lot of health benefits. But it's also a heavy burden on the liver, can be very toxic for the skin and it's one of those controversial things that you really have to ask yourself, okay, where am I on this? If you're drinking coffee all day, maybe you're toning it back and not doing it after 12 o'clock, right? You go to green tea or you go to a different version of a lighter caffeine substance. So these are the main six food groups that the endo diet says, no, niente. Try not to eat them, eat them in moderation, cut them out of your diet entirely if you can. The terrible three. I just want to touch on these briefly. So the terrible three, it's what I call them. And it would be my top recommendation. If you were going to do anything, change anything this week, well, what could it be? Start removing or eliminating entirely the terrible three from your life. They have made the biggest impact and change on how I feel every day. And I'll explain a little bit more about that later and why that could be. But gluten, um, you know, so many books have been written about gluten. What's that famous one? Um, the wheat belly book. But yeah, gluten's hard on the body. It's hard on digestion. Um, it can leave you feeling sluggish, bloaty, weight gain, brain fog. Those were kind of my experiences with gluten. And when I removed it, it was like a cloud had been lifted. Craziness to me. Um, dairy. Dairy is also part of the terrible three. We know that it has a high inflammatory response, not only in our digestive system, but also in our sinus systems. So if you're one of those people um, who eats a piece of cheese and your nose gets a little runny or you have to blow your nose later, 
That's why, because it creates a mucosal response in our body. And this is especially true of cow's milk. Um, there's some evidence that goat and sheep's milk has not been, uh, for lack of a better word, bastardized as much as cow's milk has. Um, and that a lot of women with endo or other chronic illness or even allergies are finding that goat's milk and sheep's milk does not affect them as much as cow's milk. And sugar, 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 sugar. I am talking about the acidic form of sugar that's chemically derived from the sugarcane plant white sugar, brown sugar, the sugar you put in your holiday cookie recipe, that sugar. That sugar is so inflammatory for the body. It is so detrimental to brain function. It is not good if you're working with um, an inflammatory response. And I, <laughs> I realized this the hard way when I used to be tracking my symptoms. I always noticed that my pain and my periods and my endo cycles were so much worse at the end of December. My cycle falls at the end of every month and I can never figure it out. And then it dawned on me, all December, all I was doing was eating cookies and fudge and cake and holiday <laughs> treats. And it was having this crazy response to my body. Um, and so you really have to start looking at that added sugar. Sugar is in everything. Read the back of labels to see, ah, 18 grams of sugar, that's a lot. Try to say six grams or under, be much happier, your body will thank you. Please note, I am not talking about raw honey or raw maple syrup in this discussion of sugar. Uh, those are what I call mother nature given sugars and those are naturally formed and created sugars. Um, yes, they are sugar. Yes, they metabolize in the body. However, they function very differently than the acidic form of sugar that's created. So um, if you're having a, a piece of bread and generally you would put like Nutella on it, switch it for a little bit of raw honey. It could taste great, but it's also could be a little bit more healthy for you. So there's lots of scientific research on um, the terrible three feel free to read and Google and just go to your heart's desire because there's a lot there. But one of the great things is that eating gluten-free, especially, um, and dairy-free is getting there, but eating gluten-free has never been easier. I've been gluten-free, dairy-free, and added sugar-free basically um, for almost two years now. And it is, it's so much easier than I thought it was going to be. But the trick is you have to remember that you can't substitute gluten-free junk foods um, and treats and think that it's gonna help decrease your inflammation because it's not. Um, processed gluten-free cookies are still processed cookies, right? And so um, I learned that the hard way because I was like, oh my gosh, this is gluten-free. It must be great for my putty. No, it just wasn't. So the goal is to think about whole food nourishment, raw, healthy, whole foods that we can put into our body that give us life-giving nutrients. And so what are some of the things that you really should be focusing on as you dive into this endo diet? Fruit, 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 as much fruit as you can get your hands on. It, fruit is full of antioxidants and vitamins and essential minerals that just can't be replicated. And the same is with veggies. Are you ever eating too many raw veggies? No, it is impossible to eat too many raw veggies. They are so healthy and life-giving for your body. And what's so cool is that every season, um, I live in Colorado, so it's winter here. So every season has a different set of produce that we can latch onto. We have fall produce and summer produce. Um, and it's amazing. Each one of those fruits and veggies in that produce is so life-giving. It's so full of vitamins and nutrients. And it's amazing that the earth just gives it to us, right? It's just there. So fill your plate up with all of those colors, as many colors as you can get. Obviously raw tends to be a little bit better, but that's okay. Steam them, cook them, roast them. If that's what you need to do, do it. Make sure that you're just getting that intake. Fill your plate most of the way with produce and your body will start to thank you for that. Um, really wanna focus a little bit more on lean meat. Wild caught fish, especially try to stay away from farm raised unless you know the source of the farm and trust the chemicals or the feed that they're using for those fish. Um, you know, farm raised animals, no talking bad about that at all. You just have to know the source and what it looks like and what it comes from, right? The chickens that my dad has on his small farm in Indiana are much different than the chickens that are, you know, sitting in, you know, a hundred thousand chicken pastures. Um, they're being fed very different meals and their eggs are ultimately very different and nutrients, right? And so you have to think about your meat and, and your fish in that same way. And so again, you really wanna limit your use of antibiotics and hormones in your meat and in your fish as much as possible. 
um, legumes and beans. Oh my gosh, if you're going plant-based and you're trying to be meat-free a couple of nights a week, beans, beans, the best is fruit, right? <laughs> we all know how that little rhyme ends. Um, but legumes and beans are a great source of plant protein. They're very nutritious. They can be very helpful at giving you that fiber, fill you up, keep you very satisfied so you're not getting hungry later on. Um, and then nuts, seeds, dried fruit. Oh, I love adding nuts and seeds to oatmeal. You get a lot of healthy fats from, you know, your nuts, your seeds, your avocados are also great to eat. You want to get healthy fat into your body um, because we know that research says it supports brain health. It supports healthy digestive function. Um, and coconut oil was actually my very first foray into holistic healing. I would put a little scoop of coconut oil in my coffee every morning to try to get some healthy fats into me. Um, and that was like my first step six years ago. <laughs> so, right, come full circle. And then if you're really trying to eat gluten-free, oatmeal, quinoa, rice is gluten-free. There's some wonderful recipes for homemade bread that use buckwheat um, and other different types of materials and your standard hydrogenized wheat, right? And so um, you really wanna go as gluten-free as possible if you can. I wanted to touch on one thing specifically because there's a lot of pushback for whatever reason about fruit. And I wanna say right here, right now with all of you amazing people that fruit is not the enemy. It's just not. Don't let anybody tell you not to eat fruit. It boggles my mind when somebody's like, don't eat strawberries, that, that's too much sugar. Okay, let's look at an apple and let's look at a Snickers bar. Do you think an apple metabolizes in your body the same way that a Snickers bar does? No, there's a big difference in how fruit nourishes and heals us versus how candy laden sugars and cookies and cakes nourish. In fact, I don't think they really nourish us at all, right? And look at just an apple it has potassium, vitamin C, fiber, full of antioxidants. And it's those antioxidants that are very hard to replicate in other forms of food that we find in fruit. Antioxidants promote healing. They promote life giving benefits, right? All you have to do is do a quick Google search of the benefits of apples. And you know what came up? Helps with diabetes, cancer, heart disease. Like those are some big things, right? Fruit is amazing and it has vitamins and nutrients that you just can't find in that large and concentrated supply in other areas, especially when you're thinking about what's easy for your body to metabolize and digest and utilize. Um, I'm sure you all know this, but your body doesn't just like make vitamins. You have to give it the vitamins that it needs on a daily basis, right? Your body doesn't just like generate all this like vitamin K, right? Our vitamins are what we intake. Um, and that's why that Vi those multivitamins and stuff became such a big craze in the 80s and the 90s. Did anybody take like the Flintstone vitamins? <laughs> um, that's because our bodies need vitamins. So eat your fruit, eat it in abundance, eat mangoes, eat strawberries, eat blueberries, eat everything you can get your hands on anytime and never feel guilty about that because you are healing your body with every bite. And it's delicious too, especially if you're trying to go anti-sugar, right? Some frozen grapes can be a really nice treat. And so this whole premise is that when you give your body the right environment, it can heal, it can feel better. You could alleviate some of those symptoms for yourself. And I'm not saying you're gonna wipe it all away. I'm not saying you won't feel endo, but you might have, uh, you might still have heavy bleeding, but maybe your brain fog goes away. And I'll tell you, it's nice to be able to think clearly, right? When you're dealing with so much. So go slow and start. How do we do that? What does that look like? Well, the first thing I'd recommend you do is keep a food diary. Keep a food diary for one full week. Everything you're eating, everything you're consuming, snacks, beverages, meals, even down to that quick potato chip that you grabbed on the way out of the office. Write everything and then take a look at it because it's not until we can see the whole scope of what we're putting into our bodies that we can start to understand where to start and what we want to fix and what we're okay with leaving. Um, and there's really two ways to go about it. You can go straight up cold turkey, like I'm dropping it all today. No more, never putting it in my body again. Or you could do what I call the slow burn. The slow burn, which would be taking baby steps. Maybe you reduce um, your dairy intake one month and then the next month you add gluten-free living. And then maybe the next month you focus on reducing your intake of eggs, right? It's a slow, slow burn um, because everybody functions differently. Some people function way better, just cold turkey. Some people need to ease into it and create the habit and the replacements um, as they start to change their diet. For me, 
I've done both. I did both the slow burn and cold turkey. Um, I started the slow burn six years ago by, you know, reducing my egg intake, checking the meats I was buying, eating less red meat, eating less fatty meat, looking at healthier sources of protein, trying to go plant-based one or two nights a week, one or two days a week, right? And it was that slow uh, build up to fully incorporating the entire endo diet. Um, I even tried to remove the terrible three over the course of three months. Uh, I did gluten the first month, then added on dairy the second month, and then added on sugar the last month. Um, and it was hard for me. I mean, it was really hard. What made it easier, and this is something that if you haven't done yet, I would talk with your healthcare professional and provider to see if it's a good fit for you. But I took a, did a very extensive blood uh, food sensitivity and allergy test. I did it two years ago. And we tested 88 foods in my blood that are highly reactive for the general population. And it came back, girl, you are allergic to gluten. You are allergic to cow's milk, not so much sheep and goat milk, but definitely cow's milk. And there are other allergies and different food groups that were irritating. And my doctor walked me through and she said, hey, when you eat this, this is your body's response. When you eat this, this is what your body's doing. Cause she could look at those numbers. She looked at the IgG, IgE, IgA responses, which are all these different, um, autoimmune responses, for lack of a better word, of our bodies. And it was so easy for me the day after I got those results to drop it all cold turkey. Haven't done dairy, haven't done gluten. Because I saw it on paper that my body was super sensitive to some of these food groups. So it made it really easy to quit. So if you're one of those people that needs like that, that like last punch, talk to your healthcare provider about doing maybe an allergy or food sensitivity test. Um, because it can be great motivation to jump into those lifestyle habits and that lifestyle change. So always remember, go easy on yourself. <sighs> habits are formed through baby steps. You know, you can't just decide that you're going to run a marathon tomorrow. You run a mile, then you run two miles, and you run four miles, right? You build up to it. Well, the same is true for endo and the endo diet. Start with the terrible three, right? If I could pick the three things that are causing the most inflammation in the general population, it's the terrible three. If you could start to eliminate or remove those from your diet, then slowly work through the others. Maybe that's not feasible for you. So you start in another place. That's okay. Just be gentle on yourself. And remember that making a big change takes time. So set timelines, set goals, write it out, journal it out. And I think you're gonna be very successful. Other top tips, as I have dived fully into the endo diet and holistic living for the past six years, here's what I have found that has really, really helped me personally. These may work for you, they may not, totally okay. Uh, water, water, water. Drink as much water as you can every day. I carry a Nalgene with me. I have it on me all the time. I try to drink 90 to 120 ounces of water a day a day, yes, it's great for flushing toxins out. It's great for digestion, wonderful for the skin. You'll feel glowing. Um, I live in Colorado, it's very dry here. So it really helps with that dryness of, of my environment. But um, the idea would be to drink half your body weight in ounces daily of water. You'll find big, big changes in how you feel if you can start to do water. Um, I had a doctor once tell me that she found that most of her female patients were chronically dehydrated which I thought was very interesting. Um, and she was just saying, for whatever reason, you know, women are busy, they're, they're, they're working, they're moms, they have goals, they have ambitions, right? You're always going, you have that to-do list because you're awesome. And women tend to just not focus on drinking enough water throughout the day. That was her hypothesis. I don't know if it's right, but she did say she find a lot of her um, female patients were chronically dehydrated. So it's something to be aware of. Mental and emotional work. This has been huge for my journey with endo. I have a morning routine, it works for me. You could do your routine anytime, day or night, but my morning routine is really focused on um, a gratitude journal, journaling symptoms or thoughts or stress or anxiety just in a regular diary. Um, I am a Christian, so I read my Bible, but that doesn't mean that you have to, you could do meditation work or do yoga. Um, there's so many other ways to, to dive into that mental and emotional work. It's helped me immensely. I've also seen counselors before, for um, endo and endo related symptoms because there's so much happening and sometimes you need a professional to help kind of straighten things out in your body and in your mind. So don't be afraid to do that either, but really focus on what would help you. Would taking a daily walk and keeping a gratitude journal help you calm down, help relieve some of that anxiety? 
then do it because stress and anxiety can heighten our symptoms and make us feel worse on top of what we're already experiencing. Track your symptoms. I feel like most endo uh, sisters are doing this already. So I'm sure this is redundant for you, but if you're not tracking your endometriosis symptoms, start doing it right away. Um, there's apps on your phone that you can use for that. I just keep it in my notes. There's an app, let me see if I can pull it up really quick. It's called Stardust. Stardust is a great one. They um, let you kind of track symptoms every day, when your period starts, what you're feeling like. And what is helpful about that is you could go back month by month and say, oh, you know, I might be seeing a reduction in this particular symptom. Hmm. Okay. That's great. Or when you're working with your doctor, Hey, this is bad. This isn't working. I'm having this breakthrough bleeding at this time of the month. It's going to help you immensely be able to know what's working, what's not, and what needs to be treated. So track your symptoms. Um, I stopped doing caffeine afternoon. I found that it made me jittery and a little like irritable and hyper. So I keep all my caffeine intake in the morning. I want to be able to sleep at night. One of the things I recommend is if you need that like 2.30, 3 o'clock fix of caffeine, grab a green tea, do a nice warm green tea. It's good for your antioxidants. It's a little less caffeine than coffee. It's not quite as chemical laden as like a soda pop. Go for a green tea um, and it's a little gentler and then you'll still have a little bit of that wake up feeling. Um, this is something to talk to your healthcare provider about, but I added a magnesium supplement about four years ago, I take magnesium every night. And it has been a game changer for my sleep. It's been a game changer um, in so many ways. Again, you could talk to your healthcare provider, talk to your doctor about magnesium. It's one of those things that they are finding research-wise is helping with endo, chronic illness, like female related wellness issues. Um, Magnesium is huge for our bodies and our health and most of us are deficient. So talk to your healthcare provider. I'm not recommending any medicines, but something to look into. And then move every day, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, a walk, a stretch, go to a workout class, walk around your neighborhood, move, walk, breathe. Your body benefits so much from movement. And while I say all this, while I say all of these exciting things that have helped me, I want you to go easy on yourself. Natural healing takes a long time. It's why most people give up. They're like, it didn't work for me. I did it for a month. I felt no different. Unfortunately, natural healing takes longer than that. It's not a quick band-aid. It's not a quick medicine, right? It's not a quick something that you're going to feel instantly better today, tomorrow. It does take time, especially depending on the severity of your symptoms, where you are in your lifestyle, where you are in your diet, where you are in your habits. It takes time for your body to naturally heal itself. So go easy, keep going, don't give up, keep trying different things. Um, I do believe you can do it. So I wanted to walk through a couple, it's so crazy that I feel like I'm just talking to me. So I hope, <laughs> I hope you're following with me. Um, I wanted to walk through a little bit of kind of my routine, what I eat in a day. These are all photos of actual meals and um, regular items that I enjoy. So when I wake up, I do a cup of lemon water, just one squeeze of lemon, like a half a lemon or a quarter of a lemon in a lemon water. I wait five or 10 minutes and then I drink a celery juice or a different type of green juice. And again, this is not a juice that I bought at the store. This is a juice that I made with my juicer with celery or cucumbers, green apples, sometimes lemon and ginger. Um, and then I wait 10 or 15 minutes for this, my body to fully, fully enjoy all the happiness from the juice. And then I have my coffee. Um, I I've tried to give up coffee. It's been terrible for me, but I limit myself to one or two cups a day. Gotta have it. Um, and in my coffee, I, I use a little raw honey. And I use uh, macadamia nut milk. And sometimes I blend it with a little bit of coconut oil and mm, it's, my, it's my favorite part of the morning. <laughs> um, breakfast, it's cold where I live right now. So lately I've been doing oatmeal with blueberries and maple syrup, not adding any salt, not adding any additional sugars. Um, it's gluten-free, most oats are gluten-free, but it's gluten-free oatmeal. And it's just a very um, healthy breakfast. I also eat a lot of apples and peanut butter in the morning. I love apples and peanut butter. You could also do almond butter or any type of nut butter. It's a great source of fiber, protein, healthy fats. And then you're getting your fruit and your antioxidants. Um, for lunch, this is one of the examples of 
a veggie plate. Sometimes I'm just, I don't want to make a big meal or a big salad. And so I like to kind of munch, especially now that I'm working from home all the time. So I'll just make a big raw veggie plate for lunch and I'll just munch on it over the course of a couple hours. Um, and it really fills you up, right? When you're eating fiber, um, veggies and fruits that are full of water, right? That makes you feel more full. Plus you're getting all those vital nutrients. Um, this is sweet potatoes and guac. I love a homemade chunky guacamole. It's so good for you. Uh, but I like to slice with my mandolin sweet potatoes and I put them in the oven on parchment paper, sprinkle a little sea salt, little chili pepper, a little paprika, and you just cook them on a low heat until they're crispy. And that's what I use as chips. You don't need any oil. You're not eating processed foods. And I dip my guac or whatever, you know, if I'm eating a different type of hummus, I'll use my sweet potato chips that I make for that. And then I, you know, juice and I eat a lot of smoothies. Um, for dinner, I'm going to share the recipe on the next slide. I love my quinoa Mediterranean bowl. So this is a great recipe. Um, and I'm hoping that Bianca will share the slides with you so you can have the recipe. It's very easy to make. Um, but if you want to go meat free for a night, this is a great way to do that. And then snacks. We're all hungry during the day. Of course. Yes, we're busy people. So I lately in the wintertime, pomegranate has been in season. So I've just been <laughs> eating so many pomegranate seeds. Um, but dried fruit is fantastic. Herbal tea, make a big fruit smoothie. One of my favorite smoothies to make. I do one banana, one orange, frozen cherries, frozen blueberries, and then maybe an assortment of other frozen fruit and water. And I dump it in a blender and I blend it until it's perfectly smooth. And I drink it because there's no way I'm going to eat a banana and an orange and cherries and blueberries, right? That's a lot of fruit, but I can get it in one sitting in my smoothie. It's generally what I drink after a workout because um, it really just replenishes my body and it's so delicious. And dried, oh, on dried fruit. So dried mango, great snack. Be very careful that there's no sugar, no added sugar in it, and that they're not using sulfates. A lot of the drying processes includes a lot of sulfates. You want to try to do the sulfate free. Um, recipes. Yay. So these are pictures of real recipes. So I love my uh, quinoa Mediterranean bowl. Um, and it's just basically anything that I have in my fridge, <laughs> I chop it up and I put it in some fresh made quinoa. Um, I do uh, use sheep's milk feta. So again, with my allergy test, we realized that sheep's milk was really not affecting my body in a negative way. And so I will eat sheep's milk feta on my Mediterranean bowl. And, and from time to time, not all the time, I want to try to be as you know, dairy-free as possible, but it is really adds to that bowl. But if you're just starting on the endo diet and you haven't been tested for allergies, skip the feta. You can do herbs and just basil and oregano, and it will really bring that bowl to life. And then my favorite vegan tacos, um, black beans, great source of protein, avocado, bell pepper, red onions, really anything you have in your cupboards works just fine. And you can buy corn tortillas and um, add, you know, a sauce, maybe make a homemade cilantro sauce or something. And, and they're, they're just great. So you can be really creative and eat really good food on the endo diet, diet um, and you're going to be helping your body at the same time. I wanted to share some of my favorite um, like inspirational pages. So again, I think Bianca will share these so you can look at them, but, um, some of my favorite Instagram handles that I like to follow. I do Pinterest like gluten-free recipes a lot. And then medical medium. He is super controversial in the medical field. Um, I totally acknowledge that, but his recipes are fantastic. <laughs> so he has an Instagram handle, but he also has a bunch of books, but his recipes are, are great. And I've been able to learn so many, um, different tricks just from some of his recipes. Um, and then whole food cooking every day. She has an Instagram page as well, but that's where I get all my gluten-free bread recipes from and my dairy-free bread recipes from. So good. Um, and she has a lot of desserts as well. And then Kia Vey, my company, uh, I'm really big into free resources, especially for endometriosis, um, folks like myself. And so we put tons of recipes and, and free blogs and resources and, and grocery lists and all over the place on kiave.com. So you can look into that as well. Um, but I do want to leave you with one, one quick thing. And this is something that I tell um, other women when we talk about endo and some of the community groups that I'm a part of is it's not your fault that you have endo. It is not your fault. You are not, you do not ask for this burden. You are given this burden. It is not your fault, but it is your responsibility to deal with it. Whether you like it or not, we have it. And we have to choose to give our bodies the best that we can in hopes that it makes a difference. And I just um, encourage you to remember that you are so much more powerful and remarkable than you think. Your body's more powerful and remarkable than you think. And if you give her the right environment, 
hopefully she'll be able to give you something back in return. Um, and this is <laughs> my most recent endo cycle. I was, it was not my favorite two days, but that's me on my, my big bio mat with my dog trying to work um, in terrible pain because the reality is, is endo still does suck, but we're going to do everything we can to make it better. So thank you. I hope you learned something. I'll hop into Q and a, um, but I, I do so grateful for it for the time. Thank you so much. Yeah, we have a couple of questions. Um, and I want to, sorry, I'm scrolling back up. There's no, it's okay. I can look at them too, if that's helpful. Yeah. So I, well, I found the first one and um, it's from C Brown and they would like to know how many excision surgeries have you had in totality? Um, I've had two so far, two big ones. Um, one was uh, left me with terrible complications and I ended up um, having back issues and was in a back brace for nine months. Couldn't walk, couldn't work, couldn't move. And that was a complication of a surgery um, because my endo is pretty extensive and they were just trying to do everything they could to get it out um, and try to salvage salvage something in there. <laughs> um, and so I've had two. Um, I was saving for my third and that's when I said I'm never going to do another surgery again. Thank you for sharing that. Um... And then another question is, are there any documentaries you recommend watching or books to read slash academic articles? Yes, yes. <laughs> read and research everything you can. I love this question. Um, I wish, is there a way for me to share? I don't have them off the top of my head, but is there like, do you have an email list or something I could put some of my favorites in? Because um, there's- you, Yeah, oh. feel free to send me any any um, suggestions you have, and then I can definitely send it out with the PowerPoint presentation um, to all of our, our um, registrants today. So yeah. Yeah, and there's also on the kiave.com website, if you scroll way back through the blogs, there's a blog I wrote years ago with my journey of endo, and that I list a ton of my favorite um, books and resources and all these weird things. I've done it all. All of these things I've tried. Um, and that's a great resource as well. So I'll put that in that list um, because that's a great question. Um, but my, my recommendation in general is to read and research as much as you can. And um, I don't want this to sound terrible. I don't want this to sound controversial. I am a big proponent of medicine. I think medicine is a huge, amazing thing, but look at other sources too. Look at other writings too, because sometimes we forget the holistic aspect of natural health and healing. And like my, my surgeon said, he was like, I had like a week on food in medical school. I don't know anything about it. Right. And so, and, and I think that that's something just to keep in mind as you're reading and learning is to just not turn away anything, but absorb as much as you can and then make the best decisions for your body. Definitely. Um, so, okay. So this goes back to when you were talking about um, eggs. So yeah. the questions is, okay. So they want to know, does this include eggs baked in things or eggs in general? Eggs tend to hurt me by themselves, but not baked in things. Um, and I love that C Brown ends with, I could be wrong, yeah. <laughs> right? It's that guessing game. I feel like I'm constantly in that guessing game too. listen to your body. Your body is telling you that when you're eating eggs over easy on an eggs Benedict, for example, it's not settling right. But maybe if you had an egg baked in, um, I don't know, some sort of bread or something that maybe it's not affecting you go with that, right? If that, if you're finding that you're okay there, go with that. In general, I try to stay away from all eggs or eat them in moderation. Um, you know, once in a while I'll have a Sunday brunch egg as well. Like that's just life. But I will say I do try to eat them in moderation. And if you feel like eggs baked and things are not reacting negatively in your body, then okay, then great. Do that. Um, for some of you who are just, just desperate for anything, go cold Turkey and see what happens. Um, and I think that's the beauty of our bodies is we can experiment and try different things. If you are gonna experiment or do food experimentations, you really wanna go for a period of six to eight weeks, either way, that's really where you'll start to see that change in your body. Um, and so if you're like, I'm gonna go egg free for eight weeks, see what happens, then eat an egg and see how you feel, right? And so um, I love that. I don't think you're wrong. I think your body's telling you something. Thank you. And then oh, and I, I also love C Brown's comment. If you bite it, you write it. <laughs> Yeah. So good. And then um, I think C. Brown then followed up with what type of doctor has helped you the most? Yeah. And, and I've had, um, 
originally it was my my surgeon, my endo, my endo specialist. He he's retired, which is so sad. Um, but he was awesome, and he was the first person that told me never be ashamed that you have endo. Never be ashamed to tell somebody these are my symptoms today, and I can't. I just can't. And because it is such a hard disease to deal with. And he gave me so much power and he created the shame free mentality in me. Um, and I, I will always be grateful to him. Most recently, the doctor that has helped me the most is my naturopathic doctor. So this is a doctor that has an ND degree. This is not just a holistic healer. This is not just a, like a nutritionist. This is a woman who went to four years of undergrad and then went to four years of an accredited. There's only like seven accredited uh, naturopathic schools that our government recognizes that are that can actually call themselves NDs. Um, she went to that school, then she did a residency, and she, I mean, she is truly has training behind her. And so, if you're looking for a different way to go forward with endometriosis, I would take a look at working with an ND. Um, and you can look at the accredited schools and find one near you and, and kind of see where their um, fundamental how do they work with the body? How do they work with endo? Have they worked with endo before? Um, mine's fantastic. And, and I've been so impressed uh, with her knowledge, but don't get fooled by snake oil either, right? There's a lot of people that think they're healers and it's just because they like read a Google article once and they, they think they know. So um, do your research, but most recently it's been my ND. And again, there are accredited schools that are recognized, find one from one of those um, and you should be off to a good start with that. Thank you. So um, yeah, one of our last questions is from Linda and she would like to know, where do you shop for sheep's milk? <laughs> Surprisingly, you can find it everywhere now, which is crazy to me. Um, when I started on this journey, like six years ago, like there's goat butter now, there's sheep butter now, there's all these things and you can actually find that. So Whole Foods, whole paycheck, man, it's so expensive, but Whole Foods has a great, a great place to start with, um, kind of see what your options are because they're just such a specialty place, but you could start there. And then I find like, um, I live in Colorado. So we have something called King Supers. It's a Kroger, part of the Kroger brand. Um, and so it's like your average grocery store and they have tons of different types of sheep's yogurt or plant-based yogurt. It's where I get my macadamia nut milk. So um, yeah, I mean, go to any grocery store and start looking. I think you'll be surprised what's actually there because it's becoming a huge push, not just for um, inflammation based diseases, but we have a lot of vegans that are pushing for different alternatives, uh, vegetarians, right? There's just a lot of new uh, trendy pushes toward this direction, which I love and it makes it more affordable. <laughs> yeah. And I guess this next question ties into what you were just explaining if, is, do you find your diet to be affordable? Me personally, yes. Um, again, I'm not shopping every week at like Whole Foods because I think it's whole paycheck, um, but I do run in there once in a while for a specialty ingredient, you know, that I need if I'm trying a new recipe. But really I do because I'm focusing on fruits and vegetables and I make a lot of my own meals at home. We don't do a lot of carry out. We don't go to restaurants and we don't um, order in a lot, right? And so I find that we actually save a lot of money just going to the grocery store because my dinner last night was cucumbers, tomatoes, green pepper, a little bit of sheep's milk feta, bas basil and herbs with a tiny bit of red wine vinegar. It was like a $5 meal, <laughs> right? And so you can be you can be as expensive or as cheap as you want it to be. And that's truly how life is in general, right? You can spend as much or as little as you want generally. Um, and so with this, I find it's very affordable. I find that I feel better. I find that I'm not having to eat as much because the fruits, the vegetables, the lean meats, they keep you full longer. You feel better longer. Um, yeah, I, I don't find it, I'm on a budget. I don't find it overly taxing. Though I do understand if you're eating, you know, if you're shopping only at like Air One Market or only at Whole Foods or right, one of those specialty stores, they do tend to jack the prices up. There's no way around it. Yeah. I mean, and I'm from, I'm from Southern California. So we have Sprouts. Out. Yeah. We have Trader Joe's. I mean, it, but you're so right. It's when you're focusing on just the fresh like vegetables, fruits, and you're cooking this, like it really can be an inexpensive diet. Oh, um, yeah. you just have to put in the effort to 
you know, look for all of these items. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Put in a little more effort. I did a video on my best tips for prepping for the week. Cause I'm super busy. I have no time. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I prep every week, like my food list, what I'm going to buy, what I'm going to make, what it looks like. And I have a great video on like how I do that because, um, if you think ahead and you, and you're right, if you just spend a little more time, it's very doable. And it's very, very doable on a small budget as well. Yes, I um, agree. Let's see. Um, I've lost 200 pounds. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're so right. C Brown, because meat is expensive. And when you're buying like meat and crackers and chips and like frozen pizzas and like frozen burritos, and then you're grabbing like four bottles of wine a week. I mean, that adds up. Um, and so eating, eating a little healthier and that's, and, and congrats on, um, being gluten-free and vegan. I know it was due to health issues, but you know, um, so many people struggle with maintaining that. So kudos to you because you're investing in your future. Um, a lot of it is mental. You kind of have to change your mindset where you're eating. Yes, you're so right. You have to change your mindset. Yep. As opposed to going to doctor after doctor, it saves money in the long run. I love it. You should have done the talk. You would have been much better than me. Um, Miss C Brown. (laughs) Um, yeah, you would have been much better, but you're so right. It is a mindset change because change your mind, change your life. Um, and I firmly believe that. And you're right on point because you don't need to go doctor to doctor, take a step back, listen, heal, see where you are in six months, a year, then go to a doctor and treat what's still remaining. That's kind of my, my advice. Yeah. She said, thank you. She appreciates it. Let's collaborate. Yes. I would love that. Email me. I'll put my here. I'll put my, if any of you want to email me, I'll put my email in here anytime. I love hearing from um, friends. You're all my friends now. And I would love to just hear from you if you have any questions. Um, And, oh, I'll put my, the website, Kia Bay. Dot com if you're curious about the endo resources or the products we sell. Oh, do you guys want a discount? Maybe I should put a discount code in there for you guys. Is that something you guys do? Um, feel free to add it in there. And if they would like to go ahead and use okay. it, that's good for them. Yeah. I didn't know if that I was allowed. But feel free if you yeah. like. And then I have one last question from our Q&A. Um, just, I want to fit this one in because it is- yeah. a- do you so this is from Sloan Banks um, and they would like to know do you have any essential oils for endo I have stage four and migraine headaches Ooh, that is a go I do like essential oils I do you have stage four migraines have you I wonder if that person has cut sugar I know sugar and caffeine can be huge contributors to migraines um, in general but oils. Yeah. I love essential oils. I do diffuse every night. I find eucalyptus to be very calming and clearing with sinuses. Um, lavender's very gentle. There's a couple in the young living, um, that are actually good for like mental clarity and just that opening. I don't know what they are off the top of my head. Oh, I love, um, lemon. I like to diffuse lemongrass at night a lot. Um, is very good. Mint. Oddly enough, mint is very clearing. Um, so yeah, I mean, those are kind of my favorites. I so sorry that, um, they're struggling with migraines. Migraines are awful. That just sucks. That just sucks. But, um, I wonder if they've read, there's a lot of info on migraines right now on what we can do to make those better, um, holistically. So I'm glad that they're looking into essential oils because that's definitely a good start. Yeah. And yeah, so that was our final question. Um, I, I, I want to end it with thank you so much. Like this was, this was an amazing webinar. I just love how you touched upon just giving yourself some grace um, when you're going through this. Uh, And then also your recipes. I've actually done the Mediterranean bowl minus the quinoa, but now I'm going to add the quinoa. Yeah, Um, do the quinoa. It's really delicious. Um, I've been doing that. Like I make it every week and I meal prep it and it's a really good lunch. Um, (laughs) So yeah, I really appreciate it really informative. I'm sure everybody here appreciated it as well. Um, Everything will be shared via email with everyone. So you will get this PowerPoint presentation. And I just want to end it with just, you know, thanking you for taking the time out of your day to speak to us today. And, and if you want to end it with any last words, Kaylin. Yeah, well, thank you all. And I I appreciate the, um, the comments. All of you are just wonderful. And I think we're all in this together. I think that's the one thing I want us to remember is that when it comes to endometriosis, We are all in this together. There's not one of us that's alone that we're all sharing in these experiences. Um, But I do want you to have hope 
and to know that with little by little, you can feel better every day. And if you ever want to reach out, I'm always here. I love talking endo. I love just sharing experiences. Um, and I am going to put it's endo sister 15 if no pressure, but that's 15% off for key of a all, anything you want off the website. Um, because y'all are awesome. Um, but, and I'll put my email, somebody asked for my email address again. So I'll put that in there. Yes. And then just in case you don't get it from the chat box, I will share that with everyone as well. Everything that's been shared in the chat box, I'll send it via email. Um, so yeah, thank you everyone. Um, I, and I hope everyone has a great rest of their afternoon. Thank you all so much. Take care. Thank you so much. Bye.